talking specifically about the diary markets, what is Nielsen doing in terms of um, measurement uh, changes in that area? Well, first of all, uh, we've put in place a, a program called Local Quality Acceleration, uh, which is a series of, of uh, investments that we're making to improve the effectiveness of that diary. Uh, a number of things in our call center, in our direct marketing, direct mail operations uh, to improve uh, and increase response rates uh, and particularly response rates in key demographic groups uh, so that that tool can be the best it can be. Uh, many of our clients uh, continue to use the diary and we want to make sure that they're getting everything they can from it. Um, but you won't find any Nielsen executive that will stand here and say that the diary hasn't um, uh, hasn't reached a time when we need to, to improve on it. Uh, and that's driving, and that was really one of the initial drivers of what we're doing now with Code Reader and Set Top Box Data. Uh, the challenge is economics, quite frankly. Uh, it costs a lot of money to put electronic measurement into those markets, particularly if it's a panel driven uh, electronic measurement. Um, and the advertising spend is not commensurate. Um, with, with the type of expenditures that would be necessary. So that's the struggle. Um, it would be easy to prescribe an electronic measurement solution there, but our clients wouldn't want to pay for it because the, the advertising dollars are not in those markets. Sort of a chicken and an egg. Uh, one of the things that's really underpinning our, our thoughts about set-top box data and code reader is by improving the fidelity of measurement in those local markets, those diary local markets, we can help those broadcasters, those cables, uh, to do a better job attracting national dollars uh, into the diary markets. That's an important thing for them. It's an important thing for us. Um, and that's probably one of the biggest initiatives that me and my team uh, are working on this year. Pat, tell us a little bit about initiatives in passive people measurement. Uh, a great topic. And we're early in the game in this, too. Uh, but uh, as you know, in our, in our people meter markets, we rely on, 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 uh, on households, Nielsen households, to actually press buttons when, when folks are, are watching. Uh, and we're looking at how we can improve on the, the measurement uh, fidelity uh, in these very important households. And one of the technologies is uh, really leveraging the type of thing that you see with uh, Microsoft um, Xbox Connect of uh, actually monitoring using a variety of infrared type technologies um, how many people may be watching the television set. Uh, as you know with your Xbox it can actually recognize your face. Uh, that might be getting too far ahead of ourselves but it's an important area uh, of research for us and, and something that my team is really looking to uh, push forward for an improvement in local audience measurement. That leads us to a question of privacy. How does Nielsen handle privacy? Privacy is um, a central uh, tenant of how we conduct our business. As you know, all of our panels uh, adhere to the highest privacy standards. Uh, and we work with many clients and client files uh, and, and um, adhere to, to the toughest privacy standards for every one of them. Um, all of our panels are opt-in uh, and, and will continue to be that way. Uh, we know that once privacy considerations are, are taken lightly, uh, the whole market research business is, is a big challenge, is challenged. Uh, so this is something we are, um, it's good to work for a company that, uh, that holds this as uh, such an important idea. I've heard that Nielsen is using mobile apps as part of their measurement for local. Uh, we're not using it yet, uh, but we're working on it. Uh, as you know, one of, the, uh, one of the, the, the great benefits that Nielsen brings to its clients is real people measurement in local markets, so in-market demographic measurement. Uh, it separates us from a lot of, of uh, measurement companies that don't have that capability. So we're looking at how we can expand on that, particularly uh, as a complement to set-top box data and code reader. And one of the things that we're working on is developing mobile applications that Nielsen household, Nielsen panelists can use uh, to indicate what they're watching. So we actually have a couple of different apps that, are, uh, that can run on a mobile device 
and enable a, uh, a viewer to actually indicate what they're watching. We leverage our media sync technology, which is a listening um, ACR technology, to actually uh, indicate what program the person's watching. So they're early stage development efforts, but we think that that has great benefits, could have great benefits for our clients uh, in, in, uh, in terms of bolstering in-market demographic measures. So it's very possible this could replace the diary. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's, uh, uh, there are a lot of challenges with this that we're working through, but we think this can be a great supplement to a, a, um, an electronic passive tuning source like set-top box data and code reader. Uh, by providing the in-market uh, view of what person is watching what program in concert with the sample size of set-top box data, you really um, create an environment where the, your requirement for the diary becomes much lower. Uh, so we're looking for how this can complement what we're doing with hybrid measurement uh, and, and eventually uh, allow us to transform the diary so it can be um, part of that. Could this then be used as a way of increasing the sample size for the diary? Yes. Uh, there are a number of different questions that we need to answer about how we're going to sample. And, and um, uh, it, it, on one hand, you have um, statistically reliable sampling techniques that we use to develop our, our panels now. Uh, and then you have some of the newer techniques that folks are using uh, that are very not representative, like, uh, like using viral uh, capabilities in social media to spread. Somewhere in the middle is a good answer. Somewhere in the middle you can create very representative panels and yet leverage the power of social media. Uh, and we're, we're looking into that right now.